Let's go. Let's go. For the first time ever, California's Maple Street Correctional Center opened its doors to a television crew. Stop screaming at me. I'm in jail. Giving incredible access to a uniquely female space. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. That is home to some of America's most dangerous women. I was smashing her face up against the bars. Charged with everything from drug trafficking to armed robbery, gang violence, <laughs> and even murder. I had stabbed him 50 times. Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment <laughs> of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive. <laughs> And every day can be a battle to stay safe. When good girls go bad... It's like the fucking soap opera. ..anything can happen. Hi. You're going to come and you can become famous. I guess. I want your autograph afterwards. I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Really appreciate that. In California's Maple Street Correctional Center, the inmate's favorite member of staff is doing his rounds. Guess what? My boyfriend's here. This is the commissary man, OK? He's there, and I'm looking at him, OK? And he's like, he's looking at me. Snack Daddy. Oh, we call him Snack Daddy. Father of foods. <laughs> uh, we've got top ramen, we've got chocolate, hair products. Kool-Aid, chips, and of course, our favorite, honey buns. The commissary staff deliver snacks and toiletries the inmates order if they have money on their books. Hot sauce, all I need, one soup for tears and ketchup. Ba boom oh, Boom. Boom. You know when you shop commissary, it's sort of like you get presents. They check their bag, make sure that all the goodies are, are correct, and off back to the house been waiting for this day all week. 62-year-old Pamela is very excited to get to her commissary. I've just been sitting here waiting for my little um, bag so I can have my snacks on the side. She's only been inside for a week, so this is her first commissary order. I didn't get what I wanted. What? What happened? What? I, got, I had two orders. Oh, you can't have two orders. The computer won't let you have two orders. Can you fill me out another one? What? I don't know. I don't know. I can't find it, so I want you to give me another uh, one, okay? Look. All right, let's put one through this. Yeah, Pamela has just half the snack she was expecting. Girl, I didn't get nothing I wanted. I'm not going to ask for it. No, Dave. Why are you going to follow me? Why are you doing that? And tempers are rising. <laughs> Officer Vinoy separates Pamela and Bunky Shanika before the fight escalates. The first day, she was just disappointed that she didn't get what she thought she was going to get, so just separated them. It's the easiest way of that room right now. Three bay, three value sound your students. Officer Johnson is manning the core station, the observation point in the center of the jail. Here he can monitor inmates attending class and those in Bay, Valley, and the jail's high security unit, Ocean. The highest level security would be our three ocean housing unit. So these are women who are combative, non-compliant, assaultive. Um, 
very often because of mental illness and heavy drug use or a combination there of the two. There's been a radio call for backup in Ocean. All officers not in charge of a housing unit must urgently attend. The rest of the jail is immediately put on lockdown. Today, when it was assault on staff, three ocean, you knew immediately that it was one of us, and you could tell by the, the tone and the pitch of the officer reporting that it was serious. The attending officers have managed to gain control of the inmate who now needs to be strapped to a restraint chair. The inmate attacked Officer Cortez when she opened her door to pass her food. She was sitting on the floor. She came up like she was going to grab the omelet. She came in. Yeah, she caught me in the The inmate has a history of violence, so needs to be contained as quickly as possible. Fuck you, white bitch! But the inmate doesn't intend to go quietly. Staff members were attempting to gain control of the inmate, grab my legs, grab my arms, whatever we needed to do to control the situation and move forward. Officers strap the inmate to the chair and give her a spit guard. Right. Now restrained, she's put in a safety cell where she can't cause harm to herself or others. Everybody's good, no injuries. You good? No injuries. Um, Maybe I can help him with her since I never did yeah. injuries. No, I'm good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're monitoring her for 15 minute intervals, make sure she's okay. And then once uh, she talks to forensic mental health, hopefully we can get her to calm down a bit. With the inmate contained, Officer Cortez is given first aid. She made contact with my head, ice bag to help the swelling. Because it came right through the door. Wham! Like that. Yeah. yeah? She got me right here. I didn't even feel it, but... Deputy Cortez. I'm taking you to the hospital. Okay. All right, you're going to go follow the lines when someone gets assaulted. So. As a precaution, Officer Cortez is taken to the hospital to get checked out. Stay back, stay back, stay back. Go, come here. Earlier today, Officer Cortez was assaulted by an inmate in Ocean. It's terrible because you know that one of your friends, you know, one of your 
we always say your brother, your sister in blue, you know, one of your family members is being assaulted on the other side of the wall and there's nothing you can do. I was just walking around the corner to come back to the deck. I saw her flick out. And I was like, whoa. So I got a radio. Sergeant Clayton has begun an investigation to try to understand what happened. Can you hit that light switch on the bottom? This one? Mm -hmm. He starts by reviewing the CCTV. You can see Officer Cortez walk up the stairs and approach the door. And then as soon as she opens the door, she's hit. And then based on what we have here, you can see the fight kind of goes off camera. We can't see it anymore. We don't have another image on this side. So you can only see the initial assault. She's a very strong woman. Officer Cortez did a very good job. Good defensive uh, tactics that she used to keep distance until staffing was able to get there. The inmate is in jail on violent charges and is already a known risk to staff safety. Simit has been making several threats to our staff, um, stating that she wanted to be a fighter when she gets out. Uh, challenging staff several times. It's been years since we've had an inmate here that's been that aggressive to come out and want to fight staff. Um, I'll be there. We'll yeah, sorry, I got a call. I need to go upstairs. Yeah. Whilst Officer Clayton investigates, the medical team have to check on the inmate who is being restrained in a safety cell. Oh, they're they're going to exercise her at this point, so um, they're going to take off the handcuffs. So they would have to, uh, we're going to do the vital signs. The inmate's hands are cuffed behind her back and her legs are strapped down to prevent her injuring herself or others. Would you want some water at this point? Uh, some water? Okay, we'll, we'll give it to her. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Well, that's the plan. But that's again, while we're all here, we're just going to Yeah, because it's easier to focus. Is that enough? The process. You want first, okay? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to lean forward. Okay, you good? Yeah. We're just going to exercise your legs, okay? So everyone wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes while we're moving it. Just want to try and move your toes, okay? Mm -hmm. I get this. We're going to check this if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Move your toes on this leg. Thank you. Thank you. Sergeant Clayton has interviewed the inmate to find out why she decided to attack Officer Cortez. She told us that she had planned ahead of time uh, to assault the staff. She said she woke up this morning and thought about it, and she decided she was going to assault her. So she waited for her to open the door and hit her multiple times. With his investigation complete, the inmate has moved to another facility, better equipped to deal with her volatile behavior. Yeah, another day in paradise. In Bay, inmate Lowe is on lockdown after breaking jail rules. You know what her nickname is? Her nickname's Winnie the Pooh. She doesn't like wearing pants. <laughs> All right, thank you. Right behind you. Lowe's criminal record includes robbery and battery, all committed whilst under the influence. Me and alcohol don't get along, but I tend to be drinking myself like we do. I'm like a whole different person, like day and night, when alcohol is in my system. I'm blacked out. It's kind of like I don't even know what's going on. It's dangerous. Whilst on lockdown, Lowe is denied privileges, like commissary, and has no contact with other inmates. You're in here, like, 24 hours. You only come out for 30 minutes just to shower and even use the phone. 24 hours is a long time to just sit here doing nothing. She was caught passing a note, known as a kite, to another inmate, <laughs> Kayla. A kite is jail slang for, uh, like, a little note, a little micro note. Um, and so they'll, they'll send a kite out, like, here, take this and, and pass it off. You know, make sure that Susie gets it in cell five. He's so ghetto. <laughs> 
I was on the top bunk, my monkey was on the bottom bunk, and um, she passed the kite out the door, and Lo grabbed the kite and passed one in, and Debbie was like, what was that? And Lo was just like, nothing, it wasn't nothing. Like, oh yeah, y'all in trouble, both of y'all. Lo and Kayla had already been separated, as the officers suspected they were in a relationship. So they did all their homework on us, like enough proof where they know something is happening between us two. So that's why the keep separate is on me and her. There is no such thing as a consensual relationship inside a, a jail facility. So if we've discovered that there are two individuals that are having a romantic relationship of some kind, then yes, there will be keepaways placed on them and they will be separated. Having a keepaway means Lo and Kayla are no longer allowed to be on the same housing unit or in the same classes. When, when they separate us, it kind of like, it's like a, it's like a, a knife being pulled out. Cause y'all good, y'all got me like a reality love story or some shit. <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all go record her. Y'all let her know all the good things I done said, okay? Yeah. Although relationships are banned, that hasn't stopped Lowe from breaking the jail strict, no contact rule. Yeah, I kissed her up in here. I mean, we're not supposed to do none of that, but we was in class. See, I'm supposed to be going to class to learn, but I'm going to class to do other things. <laughs> <laughs> While Lowe is on lockdown in Bay, Kayla was put in a program called Choices in Valley to help her deal with her anger issues. I do have a behavior problem. A tad bit of anger problems, just a tad bit. I don't know where the anger came from. Still to this day, I'm working on that, figuring out where all this built of anger has came from. Kayla grew up in Oakland, where she says fighting was a way of life. That's what we did. Like, girls, boys, it doesn't matter. You fight, like, you have to fight. Sometimes it's like this gang don't like this gang, but other than that, it's just. Little petty stuff, it'll turn into a fight. Like, oh, you looking at me wrong, let's fight. Next thing you know, they calling their cousin, and they calling their cousin, and it's a bigger fight. And when the cousins, they don't even know each other, but when they see each other, they gonna fight too. Oh, I got my lucky nail. Wanna see my lucky nail? Yeah. <laughs> After fighting with cellmate Pamela, Shanika is telling new Bunky Rowley what happened. So she like 60 something, I'm in my 40s. Hmm. We both OGs. <laughs> so we sitting up in there, they say, come get your commissary. So we go get our commissary. We get back in the room and she going off. She like, I ain't getting my motherfucking commissary. <laughs> <laughs> she like, my my grandson sent me some motherfucking money and he <laughs> gave me an online purchase and I didn't get my motherfucking shit. I'm like, this old lady is getting on my motherfucking nerve, cussing and shit, acting a fool. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. being negative. So she kept on cussing at me, right? And then I, I didn't want to cuss back because I don't like cussing at my elders, right? So I'm like, look, old bitch. And she said, you call me a bitch. And then I said, you acting like one. And then that's when the, the deputy came. And she like, both of y'all, this is my house. Y'all got to go. You get your butt out this room and you come over here. And I'm like, let me get my match. I'm dropping chips and shit all on the floor. <laughs> it looks like Shanika is getting on better with her new cellmate. The other day we had a like serious conversation. It was like, maybe we should just have an open relationship. And I was like, oh. I was like, I, I've never been in an open relationship. But even though I know what, how it, you know what I'm saying, I'm not probably the type of person I like. I was saying we could have a brothel if you want. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever you want, mm -hmm. just, as long as you make keep it real. Yeah, yeah. Be, be honest. And keep so you ain't gonna be yeah. jealous if he got like five different bitches. No, as long as I'm number one. <laughs> Damn so sister, sister wife. wife. I'll be your wife. sister wife. Be we can share the same man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do good things, man. We're going to get our shit together. Yeah, we Amazing mm -hmm. grace, how sweet the sound. In Bay, some of the inmates are attending church. And grace my ears. But there's one inmate who's definitely not attending. 35-year-old Olga. Yeah, I do have a personal relationship with Satan, if you must know. But I'm a Satanist. It's just crazy because people see that as a bad thing. I wouldn't be shit without my beliefs. I guess you must, yeah, so. Religion can also be a source of tension between inmates. 
People are scared of me because I can basically <clears throat> find things other people can't. Um, I can, uh, I constantly say, see in the future, the past, and the present. Whilst in jail, Olga has to find creative ways of practicing her religion. Yeah, so I mean, my uh, lines of communication aren't very strong because of the walls of cement, but um, I try my best. This is more like a spirit board that I've created to communicate with whatever it is that I communicate. I am myself a pretty religious person. I asked her about it one time and she's, she's like, oh, okay. And she was ready to talk about it. And I was like, no, I just, I can't, I can't. I just, nope, not for me, <laughs> so. Olga wasn't always a Satanist. My belief for God went out the window when in 2011, I had five miscarriages in a row in, in a period of eight months, okay? And this is where shit got real with me. Excuse me. And um, I told God, because I thought there was a, <laughs> that there was a God out there. So I said, God, if you give me just one baby at the time, he will serve you. And I meant that from the bottom of my heart. I ended up miscarrying. After her miscarriages, Olga found comfort in her new religion. I don't know, Satanism is realistic. I became dark because of what happened to me. I thought that everything that hurt me, which is why, you know, everything that hurt me was supposed to happen. I was taken on a path of deformed or distorted love that I learned something the hard way. And the only way for me to know that was to learn that hard way. But it, that's what love did to me, I guess. And now I learned that love is just an illusion. It's just really affection and I don't need comfort and stuff like that. The baby! Since converting to Satanism, Olga has given birth to a baby boy. He baby, so cute. He is so cute. She loves it. See, that's mine. That's hers. That's ours. Olga's in jail after violating her probation. One case was for identity theft, and the other one was for possession of ammunition. I had four rifle bullets on me. I want this one. She's been in and out of jail for 15 years. She's one of those frequent flyers that kind of comes and goes. Uh, same story, like, kind of came from a rough neighborhood kind of grew up in a criminal element and in around criminal elements. So long it's doing this now. <laughs> Olga wants to change her life for her son. I love him. I, I want to dedicate my life to giving him something that I never had. He, he's my spitting image, he's my twin. He's my, my, he's my piece of heart that will never leave. Like, I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm excited to be a mom. This is the lovely deputy, Ms. Matazzo. I thought I was coming back. I just got off a locker. After two weeks in lockdown, as punishment for sending a kite to girlfriend Kayla, Lo is finally back in general population. Are you going to come get me or what? You going to make that phone call? Oh, you switched your, your mind, huh? <laughs> what? Are you in with Debra? Nah, I'm in 15 by myself. How long are you going to last? I'm gonna last. Fuck that. You wanna see something? I'm just gonna get passed from the school to another pot. <laughs> Lo is once again planning to break jail rules by sending a kite to Kayla, who's in Valley. This is the juicy stuff. This is gonna get passed to Valley. The reason why they're called kites is traditionally there are these t little notes and they're written in very tiny, micro, small. Um, handwriting, they'll pull string out of their socks or out of their shirts, and they'll kind of wrap it around the end, uh, and then they'll fling it out, like, at, when, at night, typically. So they look like little kites attached to strings. Th this is for Kayla. <laughs> I'm giving it to Naley. She's here with me. Yeah. Naley got school, and school is Valley and Bay together. So there's people in Valley. She's going to give it to someone that's going back to Valley after school. That person's going to give it to the power worker, Jackie, and Jackie's going to give it to Kayla. See, it's like a domino effect. <laughs> Naley. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Nayla. Here. Put it in the pocket. Okay, so if she's there, pass that to her. Okay. If not, if she's not there, give it to CJ. And tell CJ to make sure she give it to Jackie and then Jackie give it to Kayla. Okay. All right. All right, please, please. And if you feel like they acting funny, then be like, Lo said, come on, don't be acting funny. They won't. I don't think so. All right. Hopefully they will. All right. I need her to know her. The notes being passed during a class that inmates from both Bay and Valley attend. Hi. If I could have your attention, Hello. ladies. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for last week. So Sabrina from Valley arrives late to class. Different if you guys are open to it, just in the beginning part. Highs for the week, any good feelings, any bad feelings, maybe. And Naily spots a chance to pass Lowe's note. So if we want to start on that side. My low is got dropped when I got here, so I'm not going home in two weeks, but we'll find out what happens. You still have a... Naily's a managed to successfully yeah. pass the note to Sabrina. Everything's cool though. The kite now needs to make it back from class and to Kayla in Valley. But there's been a complication. Natalie. She didn't inform them that you guys were notified about it. So they got scared when they seen the camera. They thought like it was a setup. So it never got to Kay. It actually got to the trash because she was scared. With the kite in the bin, Lowell will have to find another way to get a message to Kayla. Hey, hi, head. This is hard, is a head. 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 Head, 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 head. <laughs> Away from Lowe's note drama, Olga is giving an English lesson. Look at the color. Purple. 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 Yes. This color is purple. 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 Yes. Purple. 34 year old Yin is from China and has limited English skills. <laughs> Olga, teacher for me, English. A lot of word, 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 W O R D. Word is one. Word of one. Oh, word. I'm learning, I'm learning a lot of words. Uh. She wants to learn how to speak sentences, but she's starting to learn words. Yin is very smart. Language. 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 Always as a language. language. <laughs> now I want to help her because it seems like now we can both just have fun doing this. I was having fun with her. Very pretty. Really? Mm -hmm. No, no more Miller, Milo, Mio. <laughs> Mirror. 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 Me. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Out of the blue, Olga's just received some surprising news. You guys, come here. Yes. <gasps> Shit. Listen. OK, I'm not supposed to. She's not supposed to. Don't see me. Show me this paper. Look what it says right here. Scheduled release in two days. You were right. It's the truth. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out how this happened. Because I was supposed to get out on October. Hey, are you listening to me? Are you over there? <laughs> I'm trying to write this down because this is not, I don't believe it. I get out in two days. I go home in two days. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. This is crazy. I was just on the podium with the police talking about, I think, Ms. Yin, who I was teaching English. Out of a conversation, she just said to me, you know, you're going home soon, huh? I said, yeah, like in a month. <laughs> she says, you going home Tuesday? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you're going home on Tuesday. It says here. I'm like, so I asked her to print me out the paper because I <laughs> now I have proof. And it does say that I get out September 3rd. Olga has always believed her release date was in October. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my, I had my mindset on October 19th. What are you going to do on Tuesday? I'm going to go home to my baby. <laughs> Lo, I'm going home in today. You going home? Get the... See, that's what I'm talking nah. about. Motherfuckers going home out here, G. I get out in two days. Yeah, and she out of here. Going to her baby. You I'm heard? Out of here. Can you have for me? I guess in two days. Yes. OK, I'm coming. I love you too. Call me. 
I'm gonna I'm still be here for another day. <laughs> Three Ocean Cortez. Hola. Officer Cortez, who was assaulted by an inmate, is back at work. Uh-huh. Or I'm curious if you don't mind me asking you, was there anything that was invoked with her doing that or not at all? No prior no. issues with her? No. Not at all. None. And she's like, oh cool, thanks. <gasps> Boom. Fast. But it's, you know, it's really hard to miss this big ass head. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Officer Cortez is determined not to let the assault change her. A lot of these women are unpredictable, so, but we have to get them out. We have to give them their rec time. We have to feed them. You know, they still have to get treated with respect, and we have to be able to work with them. Are they dirty? I can still be myself, still be the person that I am. I would just be more cautious with those women that are unpredictable. Yeah. Over in Valley, Kayla is taking part in the Choices program for inmates with behavioral issues. The goal in Choices is not to get you out of jail. That's not our fucking job. Our job is to make this the last time you come to jail. Inmates in Choices have to follow strict rules designed to teach them self-discipline. So the purpose of a group in Choices is the idea that we're going to be able to address the women in this program about their behaviors, right? At times about their attitude. Also to address women who probably pissed you off during the week, right? If inmates notice each other breaking the rules, they can call each other out on their behavior. I've pulled Kayla up on the phone. She's been contracted on it. And... So are you saying that she's using the phone more than she's supposed to during in choices? Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> of course. It's been hard for me. I've been working on it, though. OK. Kayla has been coming to jail since she was just 12 years old. My first time going to jail, I think it was being in a stolen car at 12. I have been incarcerated probably on, like, 32 times. I stopped counting. That's how much I've been in jail. Like, I was in juvenile hall. I never stayed out longer than two months. Never. Her extensive criminal record means she could be facing a long sentence. I mean, here now, for a petty theft, it was me and a couple of my friends. Everybody else just got three days. We're offering you four years. So basically, if I understand the situation, you're basically saying, fuck you, We're gonna do, I'm going to do what I want. No. It's Kayla's short fuse which keeps getting her into trouble inside and outside of jail. I've been to Asset twice since I've been here. Um, one of the times I got into it with a girl, and then um, the second time is because I said I was going to beat this girl ass. This hasn't gone unnoticed by Choice's counsellor, Adrian. You can give off attitude sometimes. You know that, right? And it's come up to bite you in the ass more than once before you got here, right? So we want to work with you on that because this could be the last time you come to jail. If Kayla gets into trouble again, she could be sent back to segregation. So Officer Robinson wants to make sure she stays on the straight and narrow. You're the one that, like you said, making up your own rules, right? In somebody else's house, you're making up your own rules. It's called negotiation. Like, you know, Look, oh, no, no. That's where you go wrong. This isn't a negotiation. You don't get to choose. You're in jail and you're in choices. You just follow the jail rules and you follow choices rules. Right? You gonna be able to do that? Do it alone. I want to be here. You sure? I'm okay. All right. All right, we'll see. Time will tell. Girl. Okay. You know, she's got her whole life ahead of her. And she's spending a lot of it, her young life, in jail. And she's getting in a lot of trouble. You're, you're, you're gay. You're straight. Oh, I'm straight. <laughs> straight. Got one part, you got both parts. Inmates from Bayan Valley are attending an anger management class. So how many of you are new to this class? 
Anger management is cool. I like anger management. That's the one that's gonna help me for sure. Unfortunately, conflict is inevitable and it's a part of life. And so we're here to be able to um, share with you some great tools and skill sets that you can apply in your everyday life. Let's go ahead and do a real quick weather check-in. This morning I was a little misty. Um, probably like an hour ago, I was sunny. And then 20 minutes ago before coming in here, I was lightning, so I'm kind of like, like my weather is changing. So when I was younger, I, I was brought up in a church, so I was always at the church. I lost um, my father before my eighth grade graduation, and then my mom died um, my senior graduation, before my senior graduation. That's, that was my turning point. Everyone who knew my mom and knew me, they knew like I was mama's girl. When she left me, it's kind of like, a whole destruction happened. Heavily on my mind is um, uh, what I be putting my family through. Lois struggling to get over losing both of her parents. It still affects me to this day, so I don't think um, I don't think I'm over it. I think that's probably why I'm getting into a lot of trouble. It's because like I'm not healed. I, I drink because I'm forgetting about it, you, like to numb the pain. A choice um, that I made was me being behind a car, um, driving and knowing I was under the influence. Whilst over the limit, Lowe got into a car accident. Now, I don't remember I was drunk. They said that I hurt somebody. So yeah, that's what happened. I woke up downstairs and booking. When I went to court, the witnesses um, came and you know, they in like neck brace and stuff like that. And you kind of look at it like, I'm embarrassed. He was just hurting this innocent person. I would like to bring to this circle peace. Hopefully they find it in their heart to forgive me. She does genuinely have a good heart. And so I think if she woke up and found out that she had killed someone with a car, she would genuinely be destroyed. Something that I came in here with, and I'm going to leave it in the circle, is um, I was misty, and um, my weather was misty, and I was angry. I was ready to start an argument. Um, so I'm gonna leave that here, and then I'm gonna take back with me, it basically, is I can't control other people but myself. And I'm gonna continue being me, as in the same energy that I always have. Thank Let's you. have a group hug. Oh, I'm sure gosh. we can do that, right? Thank right you. not. Yeah. 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 Group hug. <laughs> <laughs> we got everybody. Yeah, group hug. Come on, oh, 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 I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Oh. All right, lady. Y'all need to go shower and shit. Thank you. <laughs> In Bay, Olga was excited to find out she was getting released much earlier than she thought. Olga decided to ask, when's my release date? And there was some confusion, and she thought that she was there. She was told she was going to get released. Um, and it was, I think also she had two cases going on at the same time. So the first case was finished, let's say tomorrow. So the officer was like, oh, you're gonna release tomorrow. They didn't scroll down far enough to see that there was like a second case that she had been sentenced on that was gonna keep her in custody until um, a later date. It turns out Olga isn't getting released yeah, after all. I, I, I mean, I, not that I care because it, I already know it's nobody's business. But I got excited. I told everybody, I was telling people I don't even know, bye. <laughs> Fucking stupid. <laughs> Fucking idiots. I mean, I, I'm, okay. I'm okay. I know. I knew I was going to go home yeah. on my date, October. <laughs> they had no business telling me something different. <laughs> they really didn't. Sick fucks. Sick, sick fucks. Yeah, they are. She's going to write it down. <laughs> I come on duty, and now I have to be the bearer of bad news. And I'm like, no, you're not. Like, you know. <laughs> All I can tell you is what I see in the computer. Exactly. Which so is, that's what we discussed. So it's looking like it's going to be October 19th. Okay. They fucked my head. They had no business fucking with my head like this. That sounds like it's more uh, Luna. Luna. Bit. I'm not going home anymore. Until. No, baby, no. Well, I'm really sorry that they um <laughs> they gave you the wrong date. They can't do their job right. You mean? Oh, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> My mama made me a soup and everything. <laughs> I'm so sorry when they want to Thank you, yeah. And she pouted for a couple of days about it and she came back around. As Olga's not getting out, her mum has brought her son for a video visit. Oh, <laughs> he's 
been clapping and waving at me the whole time. <laughs> Thank you. Muy bien, mi pastilla, mamá. Otra vez. Okay, okay, mama. Okay, bye, bye, Dale, Olga sees her son as a chance for a fresh start. So cute. I never knew the concept of all this, but now I get it. Like, a new little life is like my heart running around, you know? Like, it's just crazy. Like, I, I want to be a part of that life. And I want to not... This is my life. This is my new life. And I'm st I have a chance. I have a chance again to start fresh, to start new, because of this baby. Officer Cortez has a new resident in Ocean, Kayla, who has been rolled up from the Choices program. I just keep getting in trouble, so they're going to continue to put me back over here. Kayla's been punished for arguing with one of the Choices counsellors. I basically told her, I don't know who she's talking to. She's not talking to me. She couldn't be talking to me. And she was like, roll your shit up. You're going to Ocean. This is the last point of the jail. They can't put you nowhere else, so. It's loud in here, and like, it's ugly that scream all day long, all day long. I can survive in here without going crazy for a month and a half, but I'll try. Back in Bay, Lo has got her full privileges back, including use of the jail tablets. For like two weeks. So this is actually my first time logging in, so let's see what's going on in here. Oh, so here it goes, right here. I have, um, I have a lot. Unaware that Kayla has been sent to Ocean, Lo tries to get a message to her via the tablet. I'm going to text her, uh, her best friend or her mom, and then she would probably text my twin, and then I'll send it to them, and then they'll copy and paste it, and then they'll send it to her, and then do it like that back and forth. The power of technology. So I just put, I miss you cakes, because that's the nickname I gave her. And then hit me in our lingo, that means reply. And then boom, it say your message has been sent. It's fun when you break rules in jail. It's kind of like you're winning, because they don't know. Then when you get caught, then you get, you're going to be mad and lock up. <laughs> Unable to receive Lowe's message in segregation, Kayla has another way to get in touch with Lowe. How we talk on the phone is I'll either call her best friend or she'll call a family member of mine. And then we'll call at the same time and then they'll they'll merge it in, they'll connect it. And now we're on a three-way conference call. Lolo, I miss you. I wanna get out of here. I don't wanna be in here no more. I love you. You always do too much. I have something else to tell you, but you acting crazy on the phone right now. <laughs> right, let me keep going. But Kayla hasn't been completely honest with Lo. So I do have a girlfriend, and um, we live together. And, you know, I have a good relationship with her. Like, I actually like her a lot. It's a big, like, triangle. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot. All right, I love you. All right, be good. Keeping her girlfriend a secret isn't easy for Kayla. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm the god. So crazy. This is crazy. Next time. I'm talking to you, so is, what, what's going on? I'm asking you. What the fuck you think I want to, you think I want to fucking be over here? The fuck ain't nobody want to be over here? The fuck I'm over, you don't even know what the fuck going on over here. How are you on the what? I am graduating. Yeah, smearing that on the wall right there. What's on your pants? Fucking bastards. Bruh, if you knew what the fuck I was going through, you wouldn't say shit.